Good morning, folks. Here's your look at the last day on our star. The solar tornadoes continue to dance onto the Earth-facing disk, and we're reminded that they are plasma filaments and pose an eruption threat going forward. We did take an M-class solar flare early this morning. It came from the departing active region on the south. We knew it was complex, but departing, and a radio blackout was all we'll see from that blast as there was no significant CME. Looking at the sunspots, complexity was lost during the flare in the departing group, and I'm not sure the gamma class remains behind it either. A bit weak looking. Eyes on the limb for more. Solar wind telemetry shows a dip down off the high horse the stream had been riding. It doesn't look like much, but we've gotten calmer since then and haven't seen instability since the dip. We don't have much in the way of coronal holes right now, but that southern negative opening that you can spy there it has a secret coming over the limb. It bends up transequatorially and extends almost to the North Pole. Major quake factor in a few days. Before coming back to that, our top quakes in the last day were in Panama, perhaps a downgrade event here as well by the USGS, and one in the North Atlantic. This was along the ridge. Something to note. The last 30 days have been below average with earthquakes, only 8 6 magnitude events with nothing bigger. More than half of those events came during and just after the influence of this massive southern coronal hole earlier in the month. Remember its solar wind stream was tremendous. Well that transequatorial coronal hole will arrive in a few days around the time Earth is opposed by Mars and Jupiter. With the heliocentric geometries preceding that we could have significant space weather for the trifecta of earthquake factors to start the new year. Eyes open. Let's do an ice check. The Arctic is still below the satellite average but also well above its lowest marks from 2012. Down south, we see record high ice marks falling or being matched as the summer hasn't come on too strongly down there. Mobile observatory projects rolling along. Our last event of 2014 is in Amarillo on the 29th, two days away, followed by Albuquerque on January 3rd to kick off 2015. All details about our southwest swing can be found at observatoryproject.com. We are still eyeing Kate. Strongest storm on Earth heading into nowhere in the Indian Ocean. Hopefully she keeps this exact track and doesn't take a turn to the east. Here's the U.S. temperatures as of 5 a.m. Eastern Time. The difference between hot and cold, that's all about the wind drive. Powerful low in the Midwest, pulling the heat up the leading edge of the convergence and frosting the backside. We'll have flash flood and storm potential where the warmer air comes north from the Gulf, but west of the convergence, it's likely to be snow. And north of that, forget about it. Salt trucks, shovels, hats, you know the drill. We've got a triple low in Europe. The one between France and Germany is the strongest. Each one is holding onto a moisture flow and will make for the precipitation zones this evening. Down under you see a low nearly on New Zealand, drawing that same convergence line back up across northern Australia. The top watch comes with the heat as the rainy days of Darwin set in, comes with the territory so to speak. Website members, today's Fly on the Wall episode will discuss a number of topics including the coming earthquake watch, some climate discussion, and more. It's only $3 per month to become a member or $20 if you sign up for a whole year. You can just click membership on the home page menu. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got current conditions and shots of our star to close at 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.15 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.